Welcome to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. Hello everyone and welcome back to another week of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. I'm Brie Gabrielle and standing next to me is Captain Rick Murphy. We have another special show tonight. We are talking all about spearfishing and diving, which I know is something I'm starting to get into myself, so I'm very excited. And I want to tell you, I know nothing about it. I he feel like, like Sergeant Schultz, I know nothing. <laughs> Okay, before we go anywhere, let's say hi to John Cooper and Melanie Hoosh, spearfishing and diving experts filling in for Dave at the workbench, who have some great tips and products to show us for all you spearfishing divers out there. Thanks for being with us, guys. Thank you, Bree and Rick, for having us to talk about spearfishing, which is our favorite hobby. All right. Cool. All right. I know you don't like to get in the water, Rick. You're kind of scared of it. That's yep. okay. Well, you, you, you know what would happen, Bree, is what? those sharks would see me and they would say, you know, that's the guy who killed my cousin six years ago and let's get him. And I know that's what would happen. And you know, sports fishing, they send us magazine covers or mm -hmm. magazine pictures every week. So let's take a look, certainly a beautiful one, a guy snorkeling on the surface, underwater structure. I'm sure a lot of the guys are gonna be referring that tonight. As well as we've got some great dive. Here's John Cooper going down, a contender wow. boat owner. Uh, Joe Niebuhr shot this as Coopy going down and there we've got a nice amber jack that they shot. As well as a, another picture that we've got here is a new Let's see Paul it. Spear world record, I think. Yeah, his name was Wesley Skinner. He caught the 13-pound monster mutton snapper in Bimini and set the Pole Spear world record. This catch was two pounds over the current record, the original record. Nice, Wesley. That's awesome. That is awesome. So what cool. a great shot. George Butamante uh, shot that for him. Did he? Cool picture, man. Butamante. Butamante. Okay, let's dive on in and start with Captain Randy Tao in the Keys region where diving and spearfishing are pretty popular, I hear. Hey, good evening, fish fans. You know, diving in the Keys is probably one of the number one things people come to do, whether you do it chartering a boat, a dive boat, or you just pull over on the side of the road, you jump in the water, and you go look around. There's plenty of things to see and places to dive and swim throughout the Keys. From Key Largo to Key West, a lot of the best diving you're going to find is on the ocean side. Now, if you've got a boat and you're trying to figure out where to go, if you've got a Navionics chart ship in your GPS, it's going to show you the patch reefs and the rocky areas that you want to go diving on. And that's a real helpful tip if you have a GPS and you have that Navionics chip. If you don't, what you got to do is the old-fashioned way, look down in the water and see what you see, and maybe you find a rocky area, anchor your boat, and jump over and see what you find. Now, Hawks Channel area is real popular for the guys right now. Lobstering, that's kind of the big thing. Lobster season started August 6th. So everybody comes down this time of year, they stay for the week and they make their family vacation and they do some diving for lobsters and it's a real popular thing. Uh, also, for the guys that want to free dive and they want to spear fish, you're going to want to look at your, your area that you're in throughout the Keys because it will vary, but three miles offshore is where you need to be to have a spear gun on your boat. There's a lot of uh, sanctuary areas where you're not allowed to have a spear gun or pole spear on your boat, so you certainly want to make sure you understand the rules and regulations around your area throughout the Keys where you might be, but we've got some great spear fishing in that 30 to 40 feet of water. Most of the guys are using tanks, although if you're a free diver, that's not a bad dive right there to find some nice fish to shoot. All right, let's stay offshore. Randy, tell me what's going on in your region, bud. You know, yellow tailing this time of year is one of my favorite things to do. I haven't done it a lot because I've been doing some other things, but we've had dirty water and we've had good current for the last week. And those are conditions, and I'll talk about conditions all the time, they're very important to have successful yellow tailing. Anchor your boat in 50 to 60 feet of water. You want to get your chum going. And the key to successful yellow tailing is being patient getting your chum in the water, letting that start to work for you, get these fish to come up off the bottom and you'll actually see them. You'll see the fish come into your chum slick. You might see blue runners at first, you might see blue parrot fish, you might see some bait fish and then eventually the yellow tails come up. Once you start to see them behind your boat, then start fishing. It may take 10 minutes, it may take 30 minutes, but if you're patient, 
and you use a fresh piece of cut ballyhoo or fresh fresh bait and drift it back like your chum's flowing, you're going to catch your limited yellowtails, and that's the trick to doing that. All right, let's go inshore, bud. The backcountry fishing, you hear me talking about tarpon, one of my favorite fish. The backcountry tarpon fishing right now isn't red hot, but there are plenty of tarpon in the morning if you're willing to get up early and pay your dues from about daylight till mid-morning, 9, 10 o'clock, especially around the Flamingo area, maybe a little bit more to the west toward Cape Sable. If you've got some live mullet or live pinfish, you might find a tarpon. And I've got a photo of Chris Maisie from Jacksonville that was fishing with me early a couple mornings ago, and we got into him. That looks like a great fish. Good job, Randy. Let's go ahead and tell me what your second species is in shore. You know, we've been talking about snook fishing for the last month or so, and the snook bite around Flamingo and out to the west has been great. And guys are finding them up on the flats. Several guys that I've talked to have been giving me some good reports. One, Captain David Dankard, fishes out of the Lorelei in Isla Morada. I saw him the other morning. He was telling me that he's sight fishing in a foot of water and catching snook up in that 36 to 37 inch range. He said they're giant fish, they're not fighting much because these are spawning fish and they're, they're fairly easy to catch. And then you talk to some other guys that have a bay boat or the bigger boats that can't get up on the flats and they're fishing around some of the islands, they're fishing some of the shorelines with live pinfish and live finger mullet and they're catching some real nice snook like this one Tanner Stanley caught with me a couple days ago. All right, Randy, great report. Way to get us started. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the La Jolla hotspots from the Florida Keys region. Captain Randy says that you should go inshore fishing for trout this week. Fish the edges of the channels in the front of Flamingo and the outgoing tide. Low tide has been the best. And then offshore, yellowtail snappers. Anchor along the reef line in 50 to 60 feet of water. Use large hole chum bag and wait till you see those fish before you start fishing for them, Bree. Sounds good, Rick. But now it's time to tell you about some tournaments in the Florida Keys. The Robert James Sales Slam Tournament, scheduled for September 5th through the 7th in Key West, is the first of three tournaments in the annual Redbone Celebrity Tournament Series in the Florida Keys. The events raise funds for cystic fibrosis treatment and research. The Isla Mirada Invitational Fall Fly Bonefish Tournament, set for September 10th through the 12th, is not only the Keys' oldest bonefish fly tournament, it's among the most prestigious in the world. Teams of up to four divers can compete for more than $3,500 in prize money for the most lionfish captured, largest and smallest individual lionfish at the Lionfish Derby, September 12th through the 13th in Key Largo. The lionfish are an invasive species and it's important to remove them from our waters. The Marathon International Bonefish Tournament, scheduled for September 18th through the 21st, is one of the oldest angling competitions in the Florida Keys. Awards include the tongue-in-cheek wet pants titles for anglers wading from shore. And now, let's hear from the one and only Andy Newman. Bree, it continues through November 30th, and it's awarded tens of thousands of citations and trophies to anglers worldwide for almost 49 years. We're talking about the Key West Fishing Tournament, more than 40 species of fish targeted, divisions for men, women, junior anglers, and even peewees. Now, you can get more details at keywestfishingtournament.com. Of course, more details on other tournaments, events, and accommodations offerings in the Keys available at flakeys.com. And listen to Insider Fishing Report fans, a reminder, the first show in September, it's a fun-filled Florida Keys theme, and one lucky viewer will have a chance to win a stay at the Islander Resort at the Guy Harvey Outpost in Alamorada, and a half-day fishing trip with Florida Keys region expert, Captain Randy Taub. There'll be more details on how to win this great prize next week. And by the way, talking about Randy, take a look at this photo I shot Monday of him. Boy, I'll tell you something, Randy certainly has some interested friends watching him clean the catch following a successful trip he made into the Gulf of Mexico. And Rick, by the way, on that Keys website, as we go back to you in the studio, um, there's a great uh, scuba diving, snorkeling section, as well as links to the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary with information on those different rules and regulations, Rick. Great info this week, Andy. Thank you so much. Oh, Randy, fish fans. Fish fans. That's my favorite part. All right. <laughs> I hear the Southwest region has a lot to offer when it comes to spear fishing and diving, so Captain Ron Houston is on the line to give us the skinny. We know the southwest coast of Florida has a lot to offer when it comes to spearfishing and diving. 
with areas that have wrecks, your artificial reefs, concrete bridge rubble, barges, concrete culverts, ships, and natural ledges. We offer a variety, plenty of it, from Naples to Charlotte Harbor. And you know what? Some of the great contacts for information in the spearfishing and diving would be F Fantasy Scuba out of Port Charlotte, Dean's Dive Center in Fort Myers, Scuba Adventure, and Naples Marine and Excursions down in Naples. Also, the Naples Spearfishing League. But for the numbers for specific areas you can target, you might want to look at GoToFloridaGoFishing.com go to for a variety of GPS sites and areas like I just spoke about. But then also, check with MyFWC.com to make sure you know all the rules and regulations. And I strictly suggest, from Collier County all the way up to Charlotte, please know the laws and the rules. And if you don't, contact one of the people I've mentioned. That way, you don't have a problem out on the water. Now, on the offshore side, the mangrove snappers. Now, this is the time of year with summertime fishing. You've got light winds. You just got to watch out for the afternoon thunderstorms. Fishing for the mangrove snappers has still been great all throughout the region. You want to concentrate on, on wrecks and ledges anywhere from 12 to 17 miles out by simply chumming or even catching small bait along the beaches before you head out. Once you get these fish located, simply use small cut bait such as squid, shrimp, herring, or even small bucktails tip. With the calm weather, like I said, we've been having, now's the time to get out with the family for some fun for a limit and a great mangrove snapper sandwich. Now, on the, uh, before I go to the inshore side, we've got the Take a Soldier for Fishing event coming up September 13th. We've got 60 captains taking out active duty soldiers for a little redfish tournament down in downtown Naples. Keep an eye out for Take a Soldier Fishing. Now, on the inshore side, the Black Drum. We want to focus from Indian Key to Houston River, target the first half of the incoming, and the last half of the outgoing tide along middle islands with down trees and oyster bar edges or, or oyster scattered bottom. Slowly pole or troll the motor along these edges. You will you'll see these fish tipping, they'll either be tailing, and they'll be slow moving. Cut shrimp presented to these fish will work. You know what, if they become finicky, cast the bait to them and wait and let them smell the bait and let them go to the bait on their own. Believe it or not, this is a fun bite right now, a light tackle. Some of these fish right now are up to 25 pounds. Now, also on the inshore side, the redfish. Pine Island Marine at a regular key on the last half of the incoming to the first half of the outgoing. Along mangrove shorelines with numbers of mullet or abundance of pinfish, especially if those pinfish on those grass flats are flashing. Now, water temps have been hot and it can be tough to throw artificials with the hot temps and the floating grass. But if you are throwing artificials, gold spoons with weed guards. Also, the Bass Assassin Elite Shiner, four inch hook weedless. Or you can fish live bait such as pinfish, cut mullet, and cut ladyfish on the bottom. Typical size of these fish right now, anywhere from about 20 to 30 inches. All right, great report, Ronnie. It's from the CCA Southwest region. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Florida Outdoor Experience hotspots in short, Tarpon. Early in the morning and before sundown, Gordon's Pass to New Pass. Look for the free jumping and rolling fish in depths of 8 to 15 feet of water. I need to go do that, Bree. And then offshore red groupers, Marco to Fort Myers Beach, 75 to 90 feet of water, fishing hard bottom using cut bait and pin fish. Have you ever noticed that the bottom of Florida looks like a turtle head? I noticed. Oh, okay. If you say so. I No, it does. Okay, coming up on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, we're going off the deep end with our <laughs> special guests, John and Melanie, and then swimming on over to the Central West region. We'll be right back. All right. We're coming to you then, Frogman. The Chevy <laughs> Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Chevy. Find new roads. Best parts, best prices. Bennett Auto Supply, Yeti Coolers, wildly stronger, keep ice longer. CCA Florida, the voice of recreational anglers for over 25 years. Contender Boats, performance through innovation. Humminbird, simply, clearly better. The Florida Lottery, just imagine. And King Sailfish Mounts, www.kingsailfish.com. Chevy Summer Drive. The Chevy Summer Drive. 
Get 0% financing for 72 months plus a total value of $4,000 on this 2014 Silverado All-Star Edition and no monthly payments for 90 days. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Yamaha's next-generation V6 four-strokes are changing the game. Mid-range power was awesome. Fuel to burn. It's unbelievable. I couldn't believe the speed and the fuel economy is pretty impressive. I mean, I couldn't believe the power. It was like a... Just... I was more like doing a quarter mile on a drag strip. And them things are like, it's a whole other game. So I made the switch. Experience the difference for yourself during the Yamaha Discover V6 Offshore Demo Tour. See why we call it the Game Changer. Jackpot! Jackpot... Jackpot! Jackpot? Jackpot! 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 Jackpot. Get ready for the Jackpot family of scratch-off games from the Florida Lottery. With a top prize of $2 million, jackpots will happen. Will you be ready for yours? I got... I got... It. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. It's been said that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at the office. But down here in the Florida Keys, we have to disagree. Because with over 200 of the world's best charter boat captains and guides, there's no such thing as a bad day of fishing. The Florida Keys and Key West. Continuing the revolution. Faster, drier, even better built. Designed around Yamaha's latest technology outboards. Still built by the same craftsmen and anglers who launched the Bay Boat Revolution. Whether chasing world records, or time on the water with the family, or anything in between, there's a new Pathfinder model for you. Pathfinder, number one for a reason, still. Time to go over the news and notes from the FWC. August 22nd through the 24th is the Adult Huntmaster Training in Marion County. September 6th is Saltwater License-Free Fishing Day. September 10th and 11th is the FWC Commission Meeting in Kissimmee. And September 13th, don't miss the Sportsman's Expo in Tampa. For more information, visit myfwc.com. Now it's time to go off the deep end. Well, we're here at Hummingbirds Off the Deep End at the Jägermeister Workbench. My good buddy John Cooper from Diversion Charters, as well as Melanie Hausch, is here, and Melanie's going to help us. But you know, Froggy, tell me why people <clears throat> love to spearfish. Well, it's by far and away the most selective type of fishing, where you can you can um, you can pursue any species you want, except now you're in their environment, dealing with them and on their turf. So let me ask you, what do we look for once you decide to go, you well, know, habitat? Just like rod and reel fishing, you want to look for bottom structure, ledges, you know, reefs, rocks, wrecks are really popular on the west coast. Um, offshore, just like when you're dolphin fishing, you want to look for weed lines, birds, floating debris is by far and away the best. So what, what do we need, Frog? Let's say we decide to go. So let's talk a little bit about equipment. Okay. Well, the basics, obviously, you need a mask and snorkel. Uh, Preferably a low volume mask, you need a weight belt, you're naturally buoyant, you have to offset your buoyancy. Right. On the weight belt, it's always a good idea to have a knife, it's a huge, huge safety item. Some people prefer it on their leg, I like it on the belt. Occasionally you might need a flashlight, they come in LED now. Um, you get a fish stuck in the rock, you gotta penetrate through the silt or the blood, it helps you see. And you need fins. Um, fins, the sky's the limit, there's a million different shapes, sizes, materials. These are carbon fiber by far and away the best material to uh, maximize the least amount of energy to transfer, you know, the, from your leg to the water, it's the most efficient. All right, obviously we're talking about spear fishing this week, so we gotta have a gun of some sort. So you got two different guns here, John, tell me about them. Well, you got a few choices. Um, there's a lot of guns where it's just a free spear, where the spear actually leaves the gun. A lot uh -huh. of scuba divers prefer that. This is a real gun where when you shoot the fish, you, you start your way back to the surface, you put the reel in free spool, and then when you get to the surface, you could kind of manage or fight the fish with the reel. That's one choice. The other way is 
uh, a gun that is attached to a float line, which is most popular offshore. There's a couple different float lines. Um, in this case scenario, you um, shoot the fish, and the float line most of the time is attached directly to the spear. So in blue water scenario, it's a wahoo or a dolphin, soft flesh. You're just kind of managing the fish back with the float line. You don't want to take a chance on tearing it out. So the float line kind of slips through your hand like a drag on a reel. Right. And that's, that's the best way for offshore. Now, what is the, why do we have this big buoy here? Is it a different type of line, Frog? This line you would probably use with a float line if you were on the reef. It's a little more durable. The rubber one is slips through the water. It's a little better in the blue water. There's a couple different floats. This one is great for traveling because it's inflatable. It pack it, you know, it squeezes down to nothing. You can keep a stringer on one end. I always like to have a whistle on one end for safety. All right, now certainly Melanie's wearing some type of protectant, some type of skin, and then you have this wetsuit. Tell me what the differences are. Well, we're in August, right. peak summer. Water's about as warm as it can get. So all you really need is a skin. It just kind of like protect, protects wearing. you from the elements. They also come in every different camo pattern. You can kind of match your environment. Some people like the blue ones for offshore. This is a Digitech uh, pattern. There's a million different patterns and, 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 and thicknesses, you know. A three mil suit, you could pretty much get by all year in Florida. All right, now I see this little bottle of baby shampoo, that's, John. What that, is that about? That's just the most simplest handy thing. Well, you need this to get into the wetsuit because you have to lubricate the, the rubber in order to slip it on. But we always keep a five gallon bucket with some soap all the time. You get out of the water, you throw your mask in it. And all that right. keeps it from fogging up. All right, Melanie, step back out there. Why do we have that big, long extension or, you know, the, why didn't you trim the belt? Uh, the safety purposes. It's a good quick release to release the weight belt if you get in trouble. Oh, okay. So if you've got to come up from the surface, you want to get rid of that weight. Yep. You can simply quick. just pull that and it comes off. Oh yep. yeah. Hey, great job over here at the workbench. I appreciate you guys being here. I'm looking forward to talking about new products. All right. Let's do but it. it's time for us to spear ahead and go to another region. <laughs> so Bree, where are we going? Rick, spear ahead, I, I like that. Hey. Well, we are spearing ahead to Captain Jeff Page, who has lots of tips for beautiful dives in the Central West region. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Bree. Yeah, we do. We have plenty of nearshore diving and snorkeling, as well as some crystal clear offshore dives over wrecks and reefs. First, the snorkeling. In the Starbright Central West region, we have some easily accessible shallow water snorkeling spots that start to the north part of my region around Fort DeSoto, on down to Siesta Key area with an area called Point of Rocks. And there's also a couple little sunken rock reefs just off the public beach at Bradenton Beach. And these are all marked on county, Manatee County and Sarasota County uh, artificial reefs and rock pile uh, charts that you can get at the same place that you uh, renew your license tag. Also down in Venice, probably one of the most world famous areas for diving up without tanks, you can do it with snorkel, shark's teeth and fossils right off the Venice public beach south to the Venice fishing pier. Uh, the near shore spear fishing consists, consists of sheephead, snappers, mostly mangrove, groupers, gag and red, flounders, and then along with uh, starting in October 15th, stone crabs, which you can dive up around bridges, pilings, uh, rock piles off the beach, and all you need is a Florida fishing license to do that. You don't need anything special. Just remember, you take the claws from the stone crab and release his body. As far as offshore diving, big groupers, snappers, amberjacks, hogfish, among other spe species, and for novices, it's suggested to hire a guide, just like you would hire a fishing guide to take you. And one of the best in our area is Captain Marty Martell of Martell's Dive Service. I've got a couple photos tonight. First, of Josh Bibbler of Bradenton, and he's out in his 23 Pathfinder HPS with a red grouper that he speared while free diving in 15 to 20 feet of water. Cool. And then I've got a second photo of his friend, Joel, and I hope I pronounced this right, Kleppinger of Sarasota with a hog snapper that he shot free diving. All right, Jeffrey, let's stay offshore. What do you got offshore, for us? Offshore, Captain Jason Sherrill of the Bad Habit Charters in Sarasota says the amberjack bite remains strong 
And remember, if you want to get out and get a big reef donkey and take him home, you got to do it before the 25th of this month. Now, if you want to catch and release, lift your weights, eat your Wheaties, and go out there and wreck them. He's been catching them in 80 to 120 feet of water, and he's been doing real good on big live pinfish, blue runners, and grunts. But you can also catch him on the Williamson Vortex and the Shimano Butterfly Jigs. All right. Rolling inshore. Go ahead, baby. Mangrove snapper. I wish I had a mangrove snapper bite like your inshore bite down there in Flamingo, but we've got a pretty good one. And they've been holding in all the passes and inlets and on the docks, rock piles, down trees. I got some snapper the other day that were on a, just a little sunken piece of PVC pipe. Mm -hmm. They were just all over it. Uh, pretty much any kind of structure in the inlets and passes, you're going to find them. And then out on the deeper grass flats, kind of like what you've got down there, Rick, they're just out there in six to eight feet of water holding around those sand holes. And the best way to catch them is live free line pilchards or smaller pinfish on light, light fluorocarbon leader, like 12 to 15 pound test, small little hook. And uh, remember, they've got to be 12 inches, but they are tasty. Species two, redfish. Look for big schools of redfish throughout our entire region. To the north, the outer bars from Cockroach Bay South of Bishop's Harbor, when I say the outer bar, I mean that long stretch of barrier bar on the lower tides, which we've been having around noontime, 1 o'clock this, this week. Just You can ease down that outer bar. The winds have been light, and you'll see them pushing water or actually blowing up on small hatch bait. There's going to be jacks and bluefish mixed in with them, so make sure you use at least 30-pound fluorocarbon leader. And then uh, once you find them, you can throw that saltwater assassin die dapper in the Houdini pattern, rigged on a quarter ounce hookup jig head, or chunks of cut pinfish or ladyfish, or a live pinfish under a cork. Down to the south, uh, the, the south part of Turtle Bay Bar, and the bars out front of Bull Bay, as, as well as the back of Widden Creek, has been another area down to the south. Remember, anything that you're going to throw at them, the key is have them rigged up to where you can launch it out there a good ways because those fish aren't going to stop and wait for you, and you want to get it out ahead of them. Got a photo tonight of my good friend, Jerry DeAngelis of Jacksonville, with a nice redfish he got with me yesterday. Hey, great pictures this week, Captain Page. We're going to go ahead and take a look <clears throat> at the Tires Plus hotspots from the Central West region. Inshore Snook. Lots to catch and release snook on all the dock lights and bridges in the entire region at night. Free line, a select shrimp, or a DOA glow shrimp are you're going to be your best bets. And then offshore mangrove snapper, nice mangs coming off the wrecks and ledges, as well as a lot of hard bottom in 80 to 120 feet of water. Live pin fish or select shrimp is going to be the best bet for those as well. Okay. Okay, right. there we go. <laughs> Before you guys suit up, we're coming back with the East and Southeast Region Reports, only on the Chevy, Chevy Florida, Florida Insider, Insider Fishing, Fishing Report. Okay. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin, the best lures, period. Blue Water Outriggers, everything for your outdoor adventures. Guy Harvey Clothing by Aftco. Crokies, made in the USA. Drummond Community Bank. Costa, see what's out there and Casa Vieja Lodge, five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. Jackpot! Jackpot. Jackpot! Jackpot? Jackpot! 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 Jackpot. Get ready for the Jackpot family of scratch-off games from the Florida Lottery. With a top prize of $2 million, jackpots will happen. Will you be ready for yours? I got, I got <laughs> the Florida Lottery. Just imagine. What is CCA? CCA has been representing recreational fishermen for over 25 years. And when your rights to fish are threatened, the CCA is there to make sure government regulators are making sound decisions. 
I'm a life member of CCA, and when fishery decisions are being made, the CCA in the room is fighting for our recreational rights. We need to give our kids the same opportunities to fish as we did. Do what I did. Go to CCAFlorida.org and join for only $25 so you can protect your recreational angling rights. Hi, I'm Harold Bennett. My dad started Bennett Auto Spy over 57 years ago. Things have changed since then. We've grown to 33 stores and opened a 93,000 square foot distribution center. But one thing has stayed the same, our focus on the customer. That's why we have the most knowledgeable parts specialists in the business, and we only offer quality auto parts at the guaranteed lowest prices. The next time you need anything for your vehicle, think Bennett Auto Supply. Best parts, best prices, Bennett Auto Supply. Wandering out into this great unknown And when it's done, believe it, I will yell it from that mountain Find summer, the Chevy Summer Drive, the Chevy Summer Drive. Get 0% financing for 72 months, plus a total value of $4,000 on this 2014 Silverado All-Star Edition and no monthly payments for 90 days. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Welcome back. This summer, we're helping you cool down. Sportsman Adventures has joined forces with Yeti for this great giveaway. Enter for a chance to win a Yeti Tundra 45 quart cooler, a 20 ounce Yeti Rambler, and a Sportsman Adventures prize pack. Starting now, fans can enter daily at Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report.com or at SportsmansAdventures.com. But now we are going to hear from Captain Mike Holiday from the East Region, where there are a plethora of wrecks, reefs, ledges, and sea life to choose from if you're going spearfishing or diving. And something about granola bars, Mike, you'll have to explain that one to me. <laughs> we'll just avoid that for now. Uh, okay. Listen, there, there's, there's really just so many diving options in my region, whether you dive from a boat or from shore. As a rule, the further south in my region you go, the cleaner the water and the better the visibility. And that's why Palm Beach County has so many, uh, you know, commercial dive boat operations. For beach dives, there's some great reef off Flowing Rocks. Hope Sound Beach has a great reef. The wreck off the House of Refuge is very cool. Bathtub Beach has a real long reef, a shallow and deep. Walton Rocks uh, and the entire line of natural reef and ledges extending north and south of Fort Pierce Inlet. Those are all great places to snorkel and collect tropical fish, catch lobsters, and then, you know, maybe hunt small fish with a pole spear or Hawaiian sling. The bottom also, you want to pay attention in that area, the bottom is littered with live sand dollars in that 18 to 25 foot depth. And if you're from, you know, you'd like to go from a boat, there's a natural reef off Peck's Lake, uh, which is just a fantastic dive in anywhere from 8 to 25 feet of water. A little Rand Tower ledge. Um, there's really just too many wrecks in my region to list that are in 100 feet of water or less. Um, they're all great places to find lobster, both spiny and Spanish lobster, and also for spear fishing for species like snapper and grouper and cobia. Um, some of the more popular diving wrecks in my area are the Halsey, the, the Draga, and the David T, and also the Gulf Pride in Palm Beach County. So good diving in my whole area. Um, the other thing we got going on, the high-speed Wahoo bite picked up late last week. The, the most consistent actions in 200 to 300 feet of water really off Boynton Inlet and off of Jupiter Inlet. Those are the two hot spots. The majority of boats are trolling wire lines or trolling weights and either high speed lures like a red and black or a purple, uh, purple and black uh, Williamson Wahoo catcher or a Yozuri Bonita or they're fishing double hook ballyhoo or double hook mullet with a red and black Islander skirt in front of it. The Wahoo are more aggressive at first light so the best bite's been from dawn until about 9 a.m. although you can catch the fish all day long. You can also slow troll or drift with live baits like a blue runner or a goggle eye or even a small bonita. Um, you'll want to rig them on a stinger rig with like a 7-0 or 8-0 um, hook with a uh, 4-X strong treble hook in the back. Uh, maybe number 8 wire so the wahoo, if you get a big one, can't bite through it. Average wahoo is going to be 20 to 30 pounds, but there's fish up to 50 pounds being caught in my region right now. All right, let's go inshore, Mike. Well, you know, we're a week away from the August new moon. That's when the largest snook of the year come into the inlets to spawn. So, you know, for now, there's uh, good catch and release fishing taking place in Palm Beach, Jupiter, and St. Lucie inlets, as well as along the beach on the south side of the Fort Pierce inlet. And speaking of beaches, you know, the, the red minnows are starting to push in. So 
So the snook are in, in, you know, up on the beaches in places like Hope Sound Wildlife Refuge in the Vero Cove where those minnows stack up and also up around Walton Rocks. And then I've also seen some great pictures of big fish being released at the Juno and Lake Worth Piers. Live pilchards, Spanish sardines, and croakers, if you can find them, those are going to be the top baits. But early and late in the day, topwater plugs, crystal minnows, die dappers, four-inch sea shads, they've all been very, very good on the snook of all sizes right now. If you like to fly fish, this is a great time to go to the beaches and the inlets. Sight cast bits, uh, you know, sight cast the snook from the shore, uh, work the troughs along the shoreline. You can also live chum the school fish along the shoreline rock piles. I got a photo there. Uh, that's Charlie Johnson, a Maverick boat company. Uh, that's a big snook that he sight cast on the beach. He was throwing a fly rod up in Vero Beach. Um, you know, those guys are Maverick, man. They're they're fishing all the time. That's why their boats are designed for anglers. You're so um, right, Mike. So right. Well, the other thing we got going, the normal August beach from Tarpon Bite really hasn't materialized, although those red minnows are, you know, they're on the shorelines. The best tar tarpon action has been inshore for the fish in the Loxahatchee, St. Lucie, and Indian Rivers, and also the fish around the inlets at night. The big key is at night or right at first light. In all these areas, the action is really only good when the boat traffic is at a minimum. Uh, you know, once those boats start cruising by, the fish stop rolling and the bite kind of turns off. Big Mud Creek, Harbor Ridge, Roosevelt Bridge, and Fort Pierce Inlet, they all have good concentrations of those 20 to 50 pound fish right now. You can slow troll a live mullet on a 7-0 circle hook or cast a mullet or a four inch Houdini colored bass assassin sea shed right at the rolling fish. And around the inlets, a live mullet or a thread fin drifted out the inlet on the outgoing tide. That's been working right at dusk. Average tarpon right now are 60 to 100 pounds. Mike, it's been awful hot. Has it affected the bass fishing? It, you know, it has been hot, but we've had some cooler mornings, uh, particularly, you know, late last week and early this week. And that's got the bass fishing on fire. If you're really looking for a lot of action, the St. John's River in Palaka is a place to be for schooling bass right now. The key is to look for moving water. You'll find that around the islands in the middle of the channels, like uh, around the Seven Sisters or Turkey Island. The other option is to work the deeper edges of the channel casting to the busting school fish that are coming up on those edges to feed. The best action by far early in the day, first light, top water plugs, prop baits, lipless crankbaits. That's all taking fish to like three pounds right now. As the morning heats up, the fish are working out towards the drop-offs, uh, you know, in areas like Dunn's Creek. You can fish that with a Carolina rig, a June bug color worm or a drop shop, or pitch a live shiner. If you're looking for the bigger fish, a live shiner on a thick veg vegetation around the mouth of the feeder creeks, that's where you're gonna find those bigger fish. Anglers are averaging 20 to 40 bass a morning right now. Most of those fish are small, and most of the guys are off the water by nine o'clock. That's a great report from the Bennett Auto Supply East Region. Now let's take a look at the the East Region Hotspots brought to you by WaterwayCafe.com. Inshore, snook on the beaches at Hobe Sound Wildlife Refuge, sight cast with a four inch copper juice, sea shad, or bait fish flies. And then offshore, mangrove snapper off of Jupiter Inlet, 65 to 80 feet, 85 feet of water, sardines, cigar minnows, and squid are gonna really increase those chances. Well, I can't wait for that moon to come in. Woo! You a moon kind of girl. Yes, I am. Okay, now we're gonna hear <laughs> from Captain Jimbo Thomas, who not only knows what it's like fishing from a boat, but can also get down and dirty with a fish under the sea. Oh. Oh. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do we have here? Let's see, lobster season opened on August 6th, so what's that, about two weeks ago. And from what I've seen and heard, the lobsters have been very plentiful so far and i know we put a pretty good hurting on them also so generally the further south you go the better the reef system gets but the lobsters can be found and caught anywhere throughout the region they like to hang around reef bottom coral heads rocks and grass ledges or any other kind of structure i prefer to hunt for the lobsters with a net and a tickle stick away from the main reef on the more isolated heads and ledges in the hawks channel area in 15 to 25 feet of water and also a north and south Biscayne Bay. Now catching them is the easy part, you just have to find them. You know, if you find them, you can catch them. You just gotta be the first one to the spot, that's the main thing. <laughs> but most of these same areas that the lobsters are holding in, that's where you wanna go look for your fish to spear. You can find hogfish, grouper, and snapper, typically in the same areas out in the ocean, that is, where you're catching your lobsters. 
And it's not uncommon to have some nice fish, fish swim up to the areas where you're catching the lobsters. They're being drawn in and attracted by the commotion while you're catching the lobsters. Make some easy spear fish targets with a Hawaiian sling, pole spear, or spear gun. Just remember that the fish under the water, they look a lot bigger than they really are. So make sure that you're really sure they're legal before you blast them because you can't release them once you put a hole in their head. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what kind of like Kathy felt about like me, you know, uh, Jimbo. But uh, let's stay yeah. offshore. What do you got? You got it. Well, offshore, we have dolphin again. The dolphin fish has been good anywhere. Well, it's been anywhere from good to excellent, depending on how lucky you get. Most of the fish are being found 15 to 20 miles offshore, much like they've been the last couple of weeks, around scattered weed lines, floating debris, and under birds. And if you get lucky and find a big floater, you're going to have an excellent day. Once we do find the fish, we've been pitching small blue runners to them that we, we are sabiking up around anything floating, so live bait hasn't been a problem. And I don't know if it's just coincidence, but it seems that they've been biting better in the afternoon, and the, most of the fish have been extra large schoolies in the 7 to 10 pound range with some larger ones up to 25 pounds mixed in. Now, I've got a photo here. This is Jess Horn, some of his buddies that were out with us earlier in the week for Jess's bachelor party, and we had an excellent day of dolphin fishing there. We had quite a few nice fish up to about 12, 14 pounds. Good job on the Thomas Flyer, like always, Jimbo. Let's go inshore, buddy. You got it inshore. We've got catch and release snook fishing. All of the inlets, they're holding schools of snook with Palm Beach and Boca inlets being the best. They're being caught on live herrings and pilches drifted through the cuts on Jupiter rigs and also by bouncing small bucktail jigs or jig and soft plastics along the, along the bottom on both incoming and the outgoing tide. Early morning and evenings are when these snook are going to bite the best. And then we got the nighttime bite around the bridges and the dock light shadow lines. That's also been good fishing with live baits or jig and soft plastics. And then any of the mangrove shorelines have been producing, especially if there's schools of bait fish in the vicinity. Now our good buddy Gap, Captain Danny Barrow, he's been fishing the mangrove shorelines in the Lake Worth Lagoon between Southern Boulevard and Lake Worth Bridge. He's been live chumming with small live pilchers and then casting head in super spooks and Rapala skitter walks in sea trout colors first thing in the morning. He's been catching and releasing snook up to 20 pounds. Ooh. And then we have some great bone fishing in South Biscayne Bay along the western shoreline from Matheson Hammock south to Turkey Point, and then also on the outside flats from Soldier's Key south to Angelfish Creek. It's been mainly an early morning or late afternoon bite, with the outgoing tide being the most productive. And on the higher stages of the tide, look for muddy and tailing fish on top of the flats, and then on the lower stages, look for the fish along the deeper edges of the flats and channels. You want to fish with live shrimp or small crabs using 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon leader and a 2.0 to 3.0 bait keeper hook or fly tackle with crab pattern flies. All right, Jimbo, great report. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the southeast hotspots from the Captain Harry's southeast region inshore looking for tailing bonefish early in the mornings on the flats of South Biscayne Bay and then offshore look for those mahi around anything floating offshore in 15 to 20 mile range pitch live and cut baits to those fish Bree. Okay Rick well when we return on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report we're going over to the Jägermeister workbench to see what kind of new products John and Melanie have for us and then we're floating on up to the Central East region so put your spear guns Pull spears and Hawaiian slings down for now. We'll be right back. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. Hook up lures, premium lures for serious anglers. FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Guy Harvey, artist, explorer, marine scientist, conservationist, diver, and fisherman. La Jolla Resort, a place for family and fishermen. Maverick Boat Company, makers of premium boat brands. Maverick, Hughes and Pathfinder. Navionics, we start where the road ends. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater or walleye hunter, 
the responsive and fuel-efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all-new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. Jackpot! Jackpot. Jackpot. Jackpot? Jackpot. 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 Get ready for the Jackpot family of scratch-off games from the Florida Lottery. With a top prize of $2 million, jackpots will happen. Will you be ready for yours? I got, I got it. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. You know there's more to it than luck. There's fishing the right bait, the water temperature, the wind, the season, and then there's the boat. We'll put it simply, the boat matters. To own a contender is to own the best sport fishing boat on the market, period. Contender offers the most comprehensive model range with bigger, faster, and more fuel-efficient boats than the competition. There's only one choice for serious anglers. Contender Boats. Performance through innovation. Suffolk Safe 32 is constructed with seven strands of Dyneema and a single strand of Gore Performance Fiber. It's the roundest, longest casting line in the world. It offers superior abrasion resistance so you can fish it anywhere. It's the strongest, most sensitive, and durable small diameter braid ever to hit the water. Nice fish, Brett. Thanks. Suffix 832. Always use the best line. Welcome back to the Chevy Florida Insider Fisher Report. We're over here at the Jägermeister Workbench. New products, man, you guys got the cool stuff. John, let's just get right into it. Okay, well, I think the first thing that's kind of developed in Europe and it's gaining popularity here in the States is a roller gun. What's cool about this is the band originates on the bottom of the barrel. You pull it up over these two rollers. I'm not gonna load it here. Of but course it loads not. back to the normal position like another gun. And what it does is you're maximizing 100% of the energy of the band throughout the whole length of the barrel, as opposed to this gun to where when it gets to about here, you've pretty much exhausted the energy. Got so it. I think the jury's still out. It's getting pretty popular in the States. And, and um, I noticed from what I learned in the first segment is that it actually has the reel on it. So now it becomes a real gun, right? Right, right, right. So cool. you're always attached. All right, now pole spears, John? Well, like a lot of guys or families like to shoot over to the Bahamas. You know, it's primitive gear only, which is either pole spear or Hawaiian sling. This is a new carbon fiber model. You just put the rubber in the crotch of your hand and then slide your hand down the pole spear and you just kind of extend your arm and, and point it at your target. No cameraman. Yeah. <laughs> What's cool about this versus the sling <laughs> is you really only need one arm. So you have one hand free for a flashlight if you're under a rock or something like that. All right, and obviously you mentioned the Hawaiian sling hasn't changed in a gazillion years. That's right, it's still the basic and, and it's probably everybody's favorite in the Bahamas. Obviously you have a little more range than mm -hmm. a pole spear. The right. spear actually leaves your handle and it's a free spear. Um, it's best to shoot on kind of a downward trajectory as opposed to a lateral shot, but still pretty accurate. All right, now John, Certainly GoPros. All of the footage, guys, that you see tonight was shot by either John or Joe Niebuhr from Contender Boats. They really know what they're doing. They knew, I let them know about this show, and they said, man, we'll get the video for you. This is part of what you use. Yeah, that's it. We either do that, or everybody has a GoPro. They've probably seen the head mount. We switch it up. It gives you two different perspectives. Um, what's cool about this is, with just one turn of a screw, now you've got the camera off. So if I want to film you, Rick, I don't have to point a loaded gun at you. I right. take that off and I can film my buddy. And yeah. it's, you know, obviously much safer than pointing a gun at him. So the uh, GoPros have, even the mounts have come a long way. Yeah, we're in big favor of that. So let's get yeah. rid of this. Now, John, I noticed one thing here. What is this? this okay, is... this is really cool. This is called an extractor. Right. A lot of times you have to shoot a fish and it's in the reef. It's not always in the grass or the sand. The spear goes through the fish, penetrates into a rock and it's stuck. Right. And you can't get it out. And you could start, you may jeopardize bending it. But what this does is all spears on the back where it lo loads into the mechanism has a flat spot. Right. You just slide this over the flat spot. Now that gives you the leverage to twist it and work it out. Now, and it comes out like immediately. Now, Melly, I got a question for you. You know, when it comes to all these different types of guns, slings, which one do you prefer as a lady? 
Uh, I prefer the gun uh, when I'm spearfishing here. If we're going to travel over to the Bahamas, uh, I prefer the pole spear. All right, that's cool. Now, obviously, Melanie's got a skin on John, but it looks like we've got an array of different things here. Who is, makes this? This is made by Rife. This is the Digitech camo, which is just like this. This is probably the most popular one. My boys at Austin's Dive Shop in Miami say they cannot keep this in stock. I can see why. Yeah, yeah, it matches the straight. You just blend in the bottom. For now, the blue water. Is that what this is? Yeah. It's blue water. The That's blue the water camo guys. for the reef. This That's is the right. camo for the blue That's water. That's right. And there's a couple different types of camo depending on your region. You know, some just like hunting on land, there's a bunch of different patterns. Well, man, I tell you what, this short time went flew by. Thank you guys for so much for being cool. here. Hope you learned You've something. done a great job. Thanks again for all the video. Now Yamaha also has a summer ch sales choice event going on right now. And guys, what you need to understand is there's a great, a lot of benefits, five years of unlimited warranty, or you can get $750 in dealer credit. It started July 15th and it's gonna go through September 5th. So you might wanna go to yamahaoutboards.com to find out more about that. But Bree, we've gotta move on to a new region, so let's go. Yes, we do. Well, it seems like since the season opened, everyone in Florida has lobster brain, including myself. And Captain Jim Ross's anglers from the Central East region are no exception either. Oh, the anglers and divers both, they're all fired up this week, Bree, because we've got calm seas and it's allowing them to get out and do what they love. Woohoo! You know, lob yeah, lobsters are on the menu for all of these guys and gals right now, and the reefs from Vero Beach to Sebastian have been holding a pretty decent number of them. And some of those reefs are as close as 15 to 20 feet of water, so you can even access them just from the beach. You don't even need a boat. You can just cruise off the beach and start swimming out to them. Now, the reefs in the middle and north part of the Central East region are accessible only by boat, but they're holding some pretty good numbers of fish, plus there's enough lobster on those things to keep everybody happy as well. Right now, gag, gag grouper, flounder, mangrove snapper, lane snapper, and sheephead are just some of the species that anglers can plant to encounter when they hit some of those reefs and wrecks in my region. Now the other thing that we've got going on is the king mackerel, and the king mackerel are hitting pogies and mullet right now. And if you want to slow troll in the 20 to 90 foot depths, most of the fish are being caught along the beaches right now. Uh, in the 25 to 30 foot depths, that seems to be the best, but you know, anywhere where you find those bait fish schooled up, they may even be a little closer to the beach than that on some days. Now, Patrick Air Force Base, the satellite beach, seems to be one of the real productive areas this week. And then from the Delta 4 pad northward up to pad 39A, which is the old shuttle pad. And then all of those ledges that are east of there from like the a old A-can bottom out to the Hetzel Shoal region are doing pretty good. The kingfish that are holding on the 60 to 90 foot reefs are generally running a little bigger than those ones that we were just talking about holding a little closer to the beach. They're running about 18 to 25 pounds on average. And the reefs that are in 60 to 90 feet of water right now outside of Ponce and Canaveral seem to be better than the ones that are south of Canaveral from there down to Sebastian. All right, Jim, before we go inshore, I'm going to take a look at the Navionics from your region. Now, what we're talking about here, guys, is we're talking about right off of Cape Canaveral, Hexler Shoals. Now, what's going on in Hexler Shoals right now? Whenever they get some cold water updwelling, the rays are actually attracting some cobias, so you might want to look for that. Other than that, that's about the only thing that's going on. If it's not cold, don't go there. Now, Captain Jim told me if you go inshore and you get into this area where you see, according to this Navionics sonar chart, where you have all of the different little ledges, that's where you could potentially dive, catch lobsters, spear some mangrove snappers. But the other thing that's happening in between the two places, those kingfish that he was talking about, they're swimming through there, so make sure you get out in that region. It's really on fire. Good job, Jim. Let's go inshore. Well, I'll tell you what, Rick. Inshore, we've got a huge number of sharks right now. They're cruising the shorelines in the Central East region for the past couple of weeks. Most of these fish are striking pogies both in and just outside of the surf break throughout the entire region. Though All you have to do is find the bait, and you're probably going to find a shark. Now, a lot of the sharks are actually being hooked by anglers fishing from the beach, especially if they're fishing from Sebastian northward to right around that Canova Beach area. Um, guys that are casting large plugs like the Rapala x 14 are also finding good shark action whenever they see the shark in the waves jumping on those bait fish. And, and you'll see a lot of that this time of the year because we don't have much wave action. It's been very, very calm. There's black tips, spinners, fine tooth. There's even hammerheads cra uh, crashing through those waves uh, chasing those bait fish right now. And this week, um, you know, the drag screaming that you're, you're probably going to want to hear can come from either the beach side 
or from a boat side. It doesn't really matter. Just right along, right, right along that surf zone is a really, really hot spot right now. Now, most of our sharks are running 20 to 60 pounds, but some of the spinners and some of the hammerheads are even getting bigger than that. And I've got a picture of one here that's been a pretty typical size spinner shark that we've been catching lately. And they're running 50, 60, sometimes 80 pounds. So there's some pretty decent ones out there. And you'll know when you hook one because they go absolutely ballistic up in the air and start crazy, doing these crazy pirouetting spins. Now, the other thing that we've got going on right now is redfish. And the redfish in the, in the lagoons has been good in some spots and not in others. Some of the places right now, we've got a bunch of toxic water that's been, it's got a bunch of fertilizer uh, that's gotten into the water because of the rain that we've had so much of lately, and especially over in the Banana River. There's an area from the Cocoa Beach Country Club southward about to the O'Galley Causeway where the, the fertilizer has created huge algae blooms, and it's really creating like this giant dead zone, killing a lot of fish, unfortunately. So I would highly recommend not fishing in that particular area. Now, the areas that are doing really good right now seem to be from Cocoa through Titusville and the Indian River, and then the Mosquito Lagoon is still in really good shape right now. Now, if you're fishing in those areas, you want to look for glass minnows or mullet over the grassy flats. That's where you're going to find those redfish mixed in with them. Up in the Mosquito Lagoon, right now, Widgeon Bay up to about Tiger Shoal are holding really good slot size fish as well. Captain Mike Mann was telling me that his topwater plug action has been really good, and he likes using that small size, that 08 size wrap of a skitter walk especially during the morning periods, or if he's got any kind of overcast. Um, that's, that seems to be his go-to bait right now. You can also use soft plastic jerk baits and from uh, saltwater assassin like the 5-inch shad assassin or that new vapor shad that's been a really good one when the floating grass becomes an issue. Now, most of our redfish are running about 20 to 30 inches, but we've got some bigger ones right now up into the 40-inch range. And I've got a, pic a picture here of my son, Justin Ross, with a really nice fish that he caught on a Williamson topwater plug here not too long ago when he was out fishing. Hey, great nice. fish, Jim. We're gonna go ahead and get to the hot spots, the hookup lure hot spots from the Central East region. In short, Mosquito Lagoon for speckled trout using live pig fish under a bass assassin quick cork in the grass flats with three to five feet of water over them. And then offshore, tarpon along the beaches use live menhaden rigged on an 8-0 or a 9-0 VMC 7385 Circle Hook 3. Okay, Rick. Well, something new we have going on is three great tournaments. One weekend, September 25th through the 28th, presented by Marine Max. 16th annual New Smyrna Beach Billfish Invitational, where anglers fish with unrestricted tackle in this offshore world championship qualifying event to target marlin and sailfish. The small boat division includes outboards and vessels under 40 feet. Anglers can compete for additional cash prizes by entering the NSBBC tournament simultaneously. The fifth annual New Smyrna Beach Backwater Tournament allows anglers to fish inshore while competing for the heaviest redfish and trout combination. Multiple tournament awards and cash prizes are available for entrance. And the third event is the inaugural New Smyrna Beach Blue Water Challenge, where anglers fish unrestricted tackle for dolphin, wahoo, and tuna as a separate event or in conjunction with the Billfish Invitational. Each entry is eligible for a $5,000 cash prize for the heaviest fish weighed. In addition to awards, you could win an invitation to the Offshore World Championship. Tournament goals are to promote fall fishery, marine conservation, and provide scholarships to local high school students. The tournament has donated over $150,000 since 1999. Those sound like some great... Tournaments, right? Man, I'm glad you got to take a breath. <laughs> I need some water. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> coming up, we are seeing what the Northwest and Panhandle regions have to offer right here on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. Good job. Good. Oh, look at those cuties. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Chevy, find new roads. Alukai, fit by nature, crafted by hand. Best parts, best prices. Bennett Auto Supply. The Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. Rapala. Catch the latest at rapala.com. Startron. Cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. And Yamaha. Reliability starts here.
and summer. The Chevy Summer Drive. The Chevy Summer Drive. Get 0% financing for 72 months plus a total value of $4,000 on this 2014 Silverado All-Star Edition and no monthly payments for 90 days. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Continuing the revolution. Faster, drier, even better built. Designed around Yamaha's latest technology outboards. Still built by the same craftsmen and anglers who launched the Bay Boat Revolution. Whether chasing world records, or time on the water with the family, or anything in between, there's a new Pathfinder model for you. Pathfinder, number one for a reason, still. I'm Captain Rick Murphy, and I'm a life member of CCA. Why am I so involved with CCA, you ask? Because I want our fisheries to be in better shape for my kids and their kids. CCA is working to ensure the future of recreational fisheries and the rights of recreational anglers. The future of fishing starts today with you. How do you want to leave things with your kids? If you're like me, you'll want to make the right choice and go to joincacaflorida.com right now. Welcome back. When it comes to the Northwest region, Captain Jeff Hageman is going to tell you all about the diverse op diving options there is to know right now. Oh my gosh. Well, okay, go <laughs> ahead, Jeff. <laughs> Rick just almost We've made me fall over. We've got great spear fishing and diving in my region with some of the best group of fishing in Florida. <laughs> Our region is a great place to do some underwater hunting. Uh, the grouper, the hogfish, the snapper, being the most sought after fish um, in our region from as shallow as eight feet of water all the way in the winter months and as deep as 130. Now we've got some great shallow water grouper fishing. So if you don't mind putting on a wetsuit, it's a great time to get out there and do some spear fishing. The grouper are in really shallow. You you can get down with a tank, you can free dive them. Um, like I said, as, as shallow as eight feet of water, we've got a great hog fishery up here and it's getting better. We're catching more and more on hook and line. So there's lots to be shot and it's a great little thing if you're a fisherman to get down and get on these artificial wrecks. It's a great way to explore and understand what you're actually fishing. And I'll help you catch more fish on that wreck too, as well as shoot more fish on it. Um, we've also got a ton of springs in our region. So we got a lot of great cave diving and spring diving in our area. And that's up and down the coast. So there's a lot of great places to check out. Also kind of diving, but it's more snorkeling. Uh, Captain Mario Castello out of Crystal River. Um, Anywhere between Crystal River and Homosassa right now, the scallops have been really, really good this year. And now that the kids are all back in school, all the big crowds are gone, you want to do a little bit more laid back and relaxed, now's the time to go. There's plenty of scallops up there right now. Like I said, the boat traffic's dwindled down. So it's a good time to go and give it a shot. Um, big increase right now in the scallops in the shallow waters between Homosassa and Crystal River. Water temperatures have cooled down a bit in the last few days of this heavy rainfall so the temperature is about 81 83 and most of the scallops right now they're finding anywhere in the four to five feet of water and it's best to go on a low tide the lower tide you get the less tide you gotta do the less work you gotta do to get some scallops but limits are still being caught fairly easily moving off door gag and red grouper bite the gag and red grouper bite throughout the region has been really good uh, lots of fish uh, from relatively shallow to deep producing some great catches. Gags have been on the rock piles and ledges anywhere from 70 to 130 feet of water and being caught on pigfish and, and pinfish. Pigfish, I mean, is a grass grunt, um, just to clarify that. Red grouper are being caught anywhere on the flat rock and at Swiss cheese bottom and anywhere from 55 to 90 feet of water on cut sardines and squid. All also right. off where? Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> You're rolling. Mangrove snap bite. Mangrove snapper bite has been outstanding all summer long with some great fish and some great sizes in these fish too. Anywhere from inside the bay, the shipping channel, offshore, and any kind of high relief structure right now are holding lots of fish. Most of them, um, you need to use anywhere from 20 to 30 pound fluorocarbon leader right now. They've got great eyesight. A smallest hook you can get away with right now also works real good and just enough lead to get to the bottom. Little tip I've been using is a hookup jig head with a 16th ounce um, in the 16 ounce model, works really good with the tail hook shrimp with the tail just bitten off of it. Fish right now are averaging anywhere from one to five. Hey Jeff, got a quick question for you. You know what, if you um, are mangrove snapper fishing, I mean, the, the question I have is, do you use the shrimp over a cut piece of pinfish? Which do you like better? 
It depends on the size fish I'm fishing for. If I'm fishing for those inshore fish that are like one to three pounds, I like that shrimp better. It seems like you get a better bite. When you're fishing for that four to five and six to seven pound mango, I like that pinfish, that little tiny pinfish and scale cut off. All right, man. Thank you so much. Great report from the Yeti Northwest region. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Drummond Community Bank hotspots from the Northwest region. Snook on the beaches and around the passes, sardines, big fish, pinfish, free line, or with just enough lead to keep them down in the current. And then offshore, gags and red grouper bite in 70 to 120 feet of water over flat rocks, rock piles, ledges, pinfish, and cut sardines on the standard bottom rig. Breathe. You're just swinging your feet like and a you know, little kid the whole time. Speaking of standard bottom rig, I don't think what? there's one of those in this studio. I'll have to show you how to do that one day. Okay. You show me a lot. All right. Okay, so far every region has had good opportunities for spear fishing and diving, and the Panhandle region is no exception. So with the guidance of Captain Pat Deneen, we're going to get the scoop. Yeah, Bree, I tell you what, the Panhandle does have some good diving opportunities. It's popular throughout the Panhandle, not just in the salt water, but also in the freshwater uh, springs that we have uh, in northern Walton County and Washington County. I spoke with Lori of Emerald Coast Scuba in Destin, and she said that the diving this summer has been pretty good. I mean, we've had calm seas and good water clarity all summer. Currently, the visibility is averaging 40 to 60 feet. The surface waters are warm at 80-something degrees, but there is a thermocline that you can expect once you get below the thermocline, 70 degree, mid-70 degree water. So a light wetsuit may be uh, the way to go on those deeper, longer dives. Popular spearfishing targets are the red snappers, the mangrove snappers, amberjacks, groupers, and then especially in the fall, flounder. There's plenty of natural hard bottom ledges to dive in 80 plus feet of water throughout the region, and also a lot of wrecks and artificial reefs in 60 plus feet of water. And we've got a couple real significant wrecks, the USS Oriskany off of Pensacola. It's an aircraft carrier from World War II that draws divers from throughout the country. Off of Cape Sand Blast, the freighter Empire Mica was sunk by a uh, a German U-boat during World War II. And it's a real popular spearfishing site, especially for amberjacks and groupers. And if, if you want to get on the water to dive in, every port in the Panhandle has charter boat operations that are there, and, and they know the best spots to go to. So if you're a scuba diver and you want to get on the water, there's not a problem to make it happen. Uh, a buddy of mine, Kevin Seatone Gallagher, uh, he sent me a photograph of a pair of nice fat red snappers he spearfished this summer off of Dess, and he's uh, he's a very avid diver. Yeah, so man, it takes an avid one. On. Yeah, that takes an avid one to get two snappers like that. All right, Bub, let's go offshore. Rig offshore, the white marlin bite it slowed a little bit from last week's report, but it's still very good at that hundred fathom line around the nipple. Uh, the key is finding the bait and working that area hard, especially um, trying to stay with that bait once you find it. In the morning, the baits are are generally down deep from morning through midday and then later in the afternoon those baits rise further up in the water column. Troll a skipping or a, a swimming naked ballyhoo, a ballyhoo sea witch combination or a ballyhoo islander combination but you can also do well with small six to nine inch lures. Uh, dredges and surface teasers like a daisy chain or a spreader bar will definitely help get those fish interested and end up in your spread. If you get hooked up, key point, circle around the fish, even that fish on the inside of your circle Clear the inside baits and then keep those outside baits fishing. Uh, double hookups are not uncommon. Some boats are experiencing five to ten bites a day, returning the to the dock, flying multiple release flags. The average size fish is 40 to 55 pounds, and, and that bite is still going well and it continues to produce. Moving inshore, <clears throat> there's plenty of black tip sharks along the beaches, particularly around Cape Sandblast, the old pass east of Panama City, and also the Eglin beaches between Fort Walton and Navarre. Uh, you're going to find them on that first bar and in the deeper pools between the first and the second bar. Anywhere you see concentrations of ladyfish and bluefish, chances are there's plenty of black tips in the area. You can sight fish them with cigar minnows, herring, small live ladyfish, or even strips of ladyfish. But you can also just set up, anchor, chum with a split ladyfish, and then set out some baits, either lightly weighted or a free line butterfly ladyfish does well. Super fun sharks to catch. They jump, they, they spin in their jumps, they make long, fast runs. Average 15 to 40 pounds, so medium to heavy spinning tackle with 15 to 30 pound test line, two feet of wire leader, and a circle hook is a perfect setup. And don't be surprised to run into some other fish while you're in there. There's a photo there of a big king mackerel caught by Quentin Bodecker. He's oh. a young man on the right. 
We were fishing with his father last week, targeting the black tips, and that nice king mackerel swam along. Pat, thanks so much for stoked. sending in these pictures with the kids. I just love it. It makes me, my heart. Go ahead, tell me a little bit about the red fishing now. All right, Rick. The, the redfish is a consistent bite in the passes throughout the region, and it should keep getting better in September and, fall, and into the fall. There's some slot fish, but also a lot of big bulls running up to 35 plus inches. The best action is first thing in the morning, late in the afternoon, or right as the tide changes and begins to fall. Anchor up current of the pilings or the rock piles. Fish live baits on a Carolina rig right on the bottom. Use about three feet, a 30 to 40 pound leader, and hook your bait through the nose with a circle hook. If you hook them through the nose like that, it'll keep them from spinning in the current. Best bait is a four to five inch croaker, a big pinfish, or a finger mullet will also work. And on an incoming tide, sometimes you can get some good bites using uh, the Gulf baits like cigar minnows and herrings. And like I say, that bite should continue to improve as, uh, as the water cools and the days get shorter. All right, Pat, thank you so much. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Blue Water Outrigger hotspots from the Panhandle region. Captain Pat says, in short, Chum the Mid Bay Bridge with live and dead pilchards, four black snappers, and good sized Spanish mackerels. And then offshore, king mackerel bite over the natural bottom and artificial structures in 70 to 100 feet of water is still very good using live cigar minnows and herring. All your achy breaky heart. Oh, oh gosh. Those okay. kids, man, I love seeing those pictures. <laughs> with one more reason left. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report will be right back with a kill shot report from the Northeast region and your Coastal Conservation Minute tip. Sit tight. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by the Florida Lottery. Just imagine. Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line. Tires Plus. Total Car Care, the IGFA, conservation through education. Get your hands wet. Florida Outdoor Experience, Lumber Rock, Captain Harry's Fishing Supply Company. Introducing Helmmaster, Yamaha's first fully integrated digital boat control system. With Helmmaster, you can start your outboards with a swipe of a fob and control them with a single lever. Outboard trim and steering friction adjust automatically as you accelerate and decelerate. Adjust engine speed with the touch of a button. The Helmmaster joystick provides the means to navigate and dock precisely with confidence and ease. Take control of your next vessel with Helmmaster at your command. Guatemala. Startron is a multifunctional fuel additive that uses enzyme technology. Startron cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. Engines powered by Startron treated fuel start easily and run smoothly with fewer emissions and better fuel economy. Startron restores octane to old substandard fuel. Startron's enzyme formula enhances combustion for a more complete fuel burn. Startron, it's not the engine. It's the fuel. Wandering out into this great unknown. And when it's done, believe it, I will yell it from that mountain. Find summer, the Chevy Summer Drive. The Chevy Summer Drive. Get 0% financing for 72 months, plus a total value of $4,000 on this 2014 Silverado All-Star Edition and no monthly payments for 90 days. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Today's Costa Conservation Minute is about wicking your boat. So you're thinking to yourself, what is wicking your boat, Captain Rick? Now remember, Costa Sunglasses is very sensitive to what goes on in the environment as well as conservation. So if you take a rag and cut yourself a strip, and then after you get done washing the boat using a long screwdriver, you're simply going to take half of this rag and we're gonna stick it through the drain plug into the bilge. And the reason why this is very important, guys, is because by it laying in the bottom of the bilge, it's gonna absorb water. Then the dry part of the rag is gonna dry out the rag as it 
starts to dry the process. The reason why this is important is one, we're not gonna have any chemicals that maybe could be pumped out into the environment later on, but number two, it eliminates moisture so that no mildew collects inside your bilge, which is gonna be something that you don't have to worry about cleaning up later on. Now remember, this is one of those things that's very important to the environment, and that's why it's today's Costa Conservation Minute. Sorry, I'm just trying to show you my tricep like you were. That was a gun Can show, I get tickets it, to that gun that show? That was a gun show. Oh, God. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, we have <laughs> Captain Russell Theron in the Northeast region here to tell us what's going on in his waters. Hey, Russell. Hey, Bree. Hey, Rick. How you guys doing? We've got some great spear fishing, <laughs> some spring and cave diving here in Northeast Florida. I dive spear fishing charters in St. Augustine, Florida, offered scheduled spear fishing trips that they have experienced guys that are grown up here in the area and know the best spots to put you on fish. Now these are anchored dives in depths of 50 to 90 feet, 95 feet of water. Now the vis visibility can fluctuate offshore, ranging as low as 10 feet, but as far as 50 feet. Expect to see, you know, lots of structures like reefs and the wrecks and live bottoms. Most of the fish speared are flounder, sheephead, amberjack, and cobia. Now, all the divers are required to wear an inflatable signal tube. Now, what this does, it allows uh, your lookout to see you before you come to the surface at the end of your dive. The signal tube lets the captain see you in advance so he knows um, that you have surfaced and he's ready to come pick you up. Now, also, talking about offshore, We've been having a great kingfish bite. It's really improved in the last week near shore, uh, especially near the large concentration of pogey pods. Now, also the water quality has really improved in the last few weeks because of the uh, passing of that offshore storm and the full moon. And, uh, but what you wanna do to catch these kingfish, of course, is you wanna use live bait by slow trolling. The ribbon fish, the blue runners, the mullet and the pogies are certainly some of the best uh, live baits that you want to slow troll and there are plenty of large pogies just off the beach you shouldn't have any problem casting that and all the pogies that you will need the typical size kingfish is going to run anywhere from 16 to 22 pounds now moving in shore um, we want to talk about the redfish the redfish bite has really been looking up on the cool early mornings and late evenings uh, most of the guides are going to be working top water plugs because we've got some great high tides early in the mornings and late in the afternoons this weekend to locate the fish. So use those top water plugs. After you locate your redfish, switch over to a quarter cut blue crab or use a live bait like a mud minnow or maybe a finger mullet on a jig head or a Carolina rig. The typical size redfish is going to run anywhere from three to six pounds. I've got a great photo of three beautiful young ladies. On the left is Jessica Escobar, and in the middle is, Chris, is Summer Kristen, and of course on the right is Ashley Hudson. Now, Jessica and Summers, this is their first time red fishing. Ashley and Tim Hudson were so happy to share this uh, red fish experience with them. Ashley said to tell Bree that there's nothing better than a bunch of girls basically running the boat. It Don't looks like that. Yeah. It looks like that girl on the left is topless. <laughs> I need you to check oh. on that for me there, Russell. This is a yes, kid's. Sir, brother. It's a redfish top. It's a redfish top. I it's, like it. All right. What normal. else you got for us it's inshore, normal. man? So inshore the summer flounder. Now, you know, uh, I had a great experience meeting a great young man. His name was Levi Martin. Now, he's an expert flounder fisherman, and he targets flounder by swimming and waiting. Now, Levi says he can get a better bite by waiting because he has a better feel for the line. He said often a flounder would just hold the bait in its mouth. Waiting for the right time to set the hook is the key. Levi likes to fish flounder with spinning rod and a jig head tipped with a fingerlet mullet or maybe a mud minnow. Now, Rick, I tell you what, I would love to see you go fishing with Levi and y'all swim fish. No, so no, typical no. flounder are running anywhere from one to three pounds. I got a great photo of Levi Martin with a great big old mossy back flounder. He caught near Fort Clinch that weighed in at nine pounds and one ounce. Now stuff that bad boy with some crab meat and cheese. Also, I want to tell everybody, 
You certainly don't want to miss for having a great Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report event here in our own Ron Anderson Chevrolet, September 4th. Mark your calendars from 5 to 8. You don't want to miss this. All right, thank Please you. Be thank you, Russell. We're going to do a promo on that in one second. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Northeast region. In shore, target the flounder bite in the creeks, under the docks, 3 to 12 feet of water, use fingerling mullet or a mud minnow, and then offshore, fish kingfish in the clean and clear waters near the pogey pods near shore, slow troll live pogies, or mullet to get that bite. Well, Rick, as Russell was saying, come meet Rick, Jeff, Russell, and myself at Ron Anderson Chevrolet in Yui mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, on September 4th. That's going to be lots of fun. Four, uh, 5 to 8 o'clock, we'll five be there. To eight. Yes, and tell me about that CCA boat raffle there, Bree. Well, Rick, CCA wants to give you a boat. Being raffled is a Contender 28 tournament series with an Ameritrail trailer, a Pathfinder with an Ameritrail trailer, and a Hell's Bay with a custom trailer. And of course, all of these beautiful boats come with Yamaha motors. But remember, if you win and don't want the boat, you can opt for a cash prize. All you have to do is go to CCABoatRaffle.org and enter to win. Yep, you're right. I already entered. Did you? Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. All right, it's almost time to gear on up and go spear something yummy. But before you do, we're taking a quick break. And when we come back, we're telling you what species to get excited about for next week. Only on the Chevy Florida Insider Inside Fishing, Fishing Report. Report. I love how you join in with me every time. You got me crazy. Wandering out into this great unknown. And when it's done, believe it. Find summer, the Chevy Summer Drive. The Chevy Summer Drive. Get 0% financing for 72 months plus a total value of $4,000 on this 2014 Silverado All-Star Edition and no monthly payments for 90 days. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel-efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all-new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. It's been said that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at the office. But down here in the Florida Keys, we have to disagree. Because with over 200 of the world's best charter boat captains and guides, there's no such thing as a bad day of fishing. The Florida Keys and Key West. Jackpot. 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 Get ready for the Jackpot family of scratch-off games from the Florida Lottery. With a top prize of $2 million, jackpots will happen. Will you be ready for yours? I got, I got it. <laughs> the Florida Lottery. Just imagine. Thanks for tuning in to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with our captains, contests, and appearances. You never have to miss a show. You can find full episodes of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report right on your YouTube channel. And make sure to check out our website for fishing reports in your region. Visit www.chevyfloridainsiderfishingreport.com for everything you need to know to stay hooked up. Next week on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, we are catching Wahoo! Make sure to tune in to Sun Sports every Thursday, plus you can catch repeats of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report on Fridays and Saturdays. Check your local listings for times. And Rick, where were we on Monday? Monday, we were fishing our contest winner from the April promotion that we did. Michael Domkey, that was super fun. That's him and I on 
first thing boat. in the morning. 6 a.m. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh, the mosquitoes. Got and redfish, he, his biggest redfish. His fish. biggest redfish ever. He yeah. absolutely loved it. He's such a fun guy. He also caught a big tarpon. Big and tarpon. Also Two. a monster. Yeah, a monster Goliath grouper. And the lemon shark. That's Did right. You forget about that one. You know, we also, Bree, we want to mm -hmm. thank John and Melanie, but Melanie's yeah. family's here. And so we want to thank you guys for coming. That's your brother, Melanie? Yep, that's my brother. All right, and we also got to do a little special something. We yes, got we Jeff, who is one of our um, editors and shooters, and it's his birthday this week. So come in here quick, Jeff. Oh, we got Jeff. a little happy birthday happy for birthday. you. We appreciate all the hard work. John, he's the guy who edited all that great footage know, that man. you and Niebuhr provided. Hey, hope work. you guys enjoyed tonight's spear fishing show. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see Thank you on you. next week. See you next week. Bye.